Welcome to Meet the CFOO or CFU with John Bozen, our interview series. Uh, that's a fast paced interview format focused on secrets to success and, and valuable learning and career advice and big ideas for both aspiring and seasoned finance pros. Today's interview features John Bozen. We'll get to him. Let me introduce myself, Neil Brown, Executive Director of Controllers Council. And today's interview, as mentioned, uh, features John Bozen. Uh, he is CFO at Armenino Strategic Finance Outsourcing, or CSFO, and C CFU, or, or pronounced CFU, or CFOO specialist, the combination of CFO and COO or operating CFO is, is another way to, that John has told me that it's coined for certain sizes and types of organizations. Prior roles for John included chief finance and administrative officer, COO and deputy executive director, and CEO of a variety in a variety of sectors along with numerous boards, boards of directors. And we're gonna talk about John's uh, uh, career achievements uh, as we get into the question. So with that, John, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today. Excellent. So John is uh, John and I met down in uh, Sarasota, uh, where we both live, or I live part of the year. So, and we talked about doing this uh, several months ago, and so I'm glad we're finally doing it. Our first question, I mentioned John's uh, significant academic achievements include an MBA, an MS Technology Management, a BSBA in Project Management, a BS in Finance, and a doctorate in Management, Organizational Development, and Change. So with that uh, very deep uh, academic credentials, John, what inspired you to pursue a career in corporate finance? Well, I, you know, as a child and really it's sort of through my high school years, I had my Dad had a pretty good amount of friends that were leading and managing you know, large successful businesses and kind of looked at those traits. And my father um, was uh, a, a high level um, officer in the military. And I just kind of really watched him manage staff and uh, really be really a, a, in a CEO type position. And so I always really gravitated and wanted to be a CEO and more so of a meaningful organization directing strategy, uh, improving business, uh, sort of, you know, in ways that either deliver products and services, but also uh, being able to be a CEO that, um, you know, can deliver on quality, but also on price and value. And having kind of always discussed and been around those types of individuals, um, one of the things that they had always told me is that they had con really gone through the ranks. They, they had really sharp pencils and they were just, they were, you know, they were CFOs and they kind of really went the CFO route then the stepping stone was the COO and the CEO. And so, uh, you know, being a CEO um, that is really well versed in, you know, all of the executive disciplines. And I wanted to make sure that I was known for having an extremely, again, sharp pencil and a background that was just proven as a CFO is that, you know, if I get into the leadership role, we're in a meeting, we're in executive sessions, that I, I could really partner with the CFO and I could speak that part of the business because I always thought that that was half of what a CEO did. You had to really know the numbers, and then you'd have to be able to really take it to the next level. So when I really began my career early in the 1990s, the only way to become a CEO was through that journey from the CFO role to the COO and then into the CEO position. And it's, I think today it's quite a forgotten path and one which I believe is uh, partly why the Sifu role is becoming ever so important. We're seeing CEOs with very limited executive experience. Uh, you see little to no financial acumen and often only technical or creative experience. We're seeing people come out of technology roles, out of creative and marketing, really driving uh, revenue growth and, and driving a uh, customer list, but they're not really managing the back office or the business. And I think there's not enough sense of profitability, managing expenses. And one of the things that I uh, learned early in my career, and probably in the mid 90s too, is that there's a lot of ways to grow a business. And you'll see uh, unsuccessful CEOs and CFOs trying to grow that revenue base and instead uh, growing liability at the same rate, growing uh, expenses. And, you know, next thing you know, you've got 5,000 employees, a ton of liability and profitability and margins haven't expanded. So I had a lot of early experience of some really strong CFOs and CEOs saying, look, we need to focus on margin, profitability, 
um, and you know revenue growth will happen, but it'll happen organically and when it, when and in, in, in the right way. So um, I think uh, again, as a result, uh, I, I I think I wanted to make sure that I was what I call two sides of one coin, and one side of that coin being a financial expert. Um, and no one can really, you know, challenge me that, you know, I didn't know the financial statements. I didn't know how, you know, didn't really know the inner workings of the business. And then the other side of that coin is uh, being an operator, having strong leadership skills. And so with that goal, my journey to the CFO office as an important basis of my professional media, my career began in that way. So I really started um, in uh, gaining experience in finance, accounting, junior level positions all the way up to the office of the CFO. Excellent. Very interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, so so tell us a little bit then about the roles and responsibilities of a CFO and how do they differ from a CFO only or a COO only? Yeah, it's a great question. I think uh, the first piece of it really is that the, the chief financial operating officer is first and foremost the CFO of the business, leading the entirety of the office of the CFO. And much to what my previous question answer was, was that um, you know it's it's a, you you got to be able to step from the CFO those the rudimentary fundamental concepts of finance and accounting, and those give you the tool sets to I think make uh, effective operating um, decisions, and then also into leadership. So I, again, I think um, you know you're 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 managing and leading the entirety of the office of the CFO. And fundamentally in charge of the company's financial health. That's that's the first piece you got to get right. And then the operations portion really encompasses the administrative, the back office processes, and in some instances uh, some front office responsibilities. You'll see every once in a while you'll see some type of chief financial administrative officer or CFO kind of dabble in some front office um, work, which often will include you know, technology, um, sometimes marketing. But the chief finance and operating officer. I think develops plans to improve a company's financial outlook. So that's the CFO piece. Then I think while also supervising different departments as they implement those plans, that's the operator hat. Uh, they take charge of financial processes such as portfolio management. They can weave in some administrative procedures such as ensuring compliance with government re re regulations. Just sort of as an example, um, I think the chief finance and operating officer though usually supervises several departments. Like I said, from accounting to information technology, and even human resources. Uh, the easiest way I think to define the CFO though is that they are the financial head of the organization, but that they have unique skills and talents to show up as a leader, having broad oversight uh, and moving beyond singular tasks uh, to navigate the business cohesively around financial and business performance. In order to be successful in the CFO role, um, I think you you know you've got to be able to blend that traditional, like you're saying earlier, that CFO traditional roles and then the COO skills and attributes. And I think some of those attributes, I'll just kind of kind of rattle off some of these, but he, obviously the, the operator pieces are strong mentoring skills. You gotta be, you have to have a desire to lead others. Often you'll see more traditional CFO kind of sit back behind the CFO desk, but it, to, to really encapsulate that, the CFO pieces, you wanna lead others. You wanna be able to coach across diverse levels of expertise, functional disciplines, uh, and regardless if you are the expert in those areas or not, what you need to be able to do is put on that operator hat and be the expert in leading, operating, and not always uh, be the one who can be, you know, the expert in those functional disciplines. Uh, so I think a CFO, a CFO is someone who is then also entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, it's an entrepreneurial team player. You've got to be able to manage multiple projects. Often you'll see a CFO on maybe just a limited projects. But I think the combinations where you're coming in and just, you know, a, a broad set of projects um, and then you have the ability to influence, engage and, and direct, uh, engage direct and indirect reports and peers through those processes. Uh, of course, you've got to leverage a little bit more in problem solving. You've got to be able to anticipate and proactively address complex issues. Not that you're not doing that as a CFO, but the operator hat, you're kind of doing a little in a greater capacity. And I think um, you have, you've got to be able to be a little more uh, sort of energetic. You might be just in the CFO office, you've got a little bit more, a little more flexible. And I think what you'll find in uh, what I'll probably end up discussing today is you've really got to focus on uh, being proactive and collaborative and positively, uh, you know, and, pro and being sort of, you know, productive, you know, impacting strategy and both not just strategically, but 
in terms of tactical finance and then uh, administration and operations initiatives. Um, I think the other piece too is expanding, um, of course, all CFOs, you know, they've got great, um, they're great orally, you know, they've got pretty sound in, interpersonal skills, but you've got to be exceptionally written. You've got to be a great orator. You've got to have great pro uh, presentation skills, the ability to interface with senior management, and you know all of that driving down towards influencing staff to take take that CFO data, take the operator um, um, information, that insight, and double down on it and get people to really um, go outside of you know uh, their normal thinking. Uh, I think you know again I've said you can't really just sit behind the desk of a, an accounting or finance module. You also need the ability, I think, to operate uh, uh, as a strategic thinker. And ultimately, I'd say uh, one of the great answers, if you ask for just a single answer, how would the CFO go beyond MDNA? So every CFO is good at management, uh, you know, uh, management discussion and analysis. But I think the CFO piece is taking one step further than MDNA. You know, idiot. You know, sort of ideating on it, um, planning, initiating, and then completing. That's where the operator hat comes in. It's taking that MDNA and actually putting into action and completing it. And I think that's that's really the overall vision and direction of where the CFU position and responsibilities help to tie the CEO and the CFU closer to one another. You're really starting to see these CFU positions really become the right hand of the CEO. And in, 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 in organizations where maybe they don't need or are not large enough to have a CEO, that Sifu sits close to the CEO. And you're also seeing in large organizations where the Sifu is just taking, there may be a, a, a chief operating officer, but the Sifu portion is maybe a little different part of the operations. Traditionally, maybe just the back office pieces where the operations person is handling other parts of the, of the, of the operation. And that Sifu person is sitting really close to the CEO. So I think a Sifu is the only person in the company who can gather financial information, that's financial specific data, and then the other data that lives across your operation, and then really spreading that back to the business. And I like to think of it as an organizational cube. You're taking this, this knowledge cube, you're taking the, you know, you could say it's a, a three statement, um, you know, um, financial data. Then you're starting to take all this operations data. Then you're going out as the operator and you're getting human data. And a great CFU can turn that into a knowledge base, a cube. But I think the best CFUs, what they are able to do then is they're able to take that cube and inject it across the business, across the organization, say, you know what, we're turning this into initiatives and we're turning this into power. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, that's that's really what, in, in, in a sense, what the CFU really does. But I'll save my last piece on this answer here because I'm a little long-winded on it. I, it doesn't stop there. What makes this CFO of CFU is taking that cube and harnessing it across the organization um, and not only being the operator, but being the executive and championing and leading that change that drives the business, uh, uh, you know, to actually the original financial outcomes of the CFO. So it's kind of circuitous. It comes back, I think, back to the CFO's original, um, you know, um, objective. Um, and I want to put this one note in here too, because I think this really heightens and enlightens, will enlighten people on what's changing out in the business. Be between 2018 and, and 2028, the seafood career is expected to grow 16% and produce about 105,000 job opportunities across the United States. And this is according to Sherm. So you can really see that this role is expanding and growing all the way to 2028. So about 105,000 jobs to be created, which is amazing. Interesting. So there is actually stats on, on the yeah, I did a little research on it, and you know, Sherm's one of the best. And I was, I, I, I knew it was growing, but to you know, 105,000 job opportunities in wow. the United States is significant. That's that's really.